Hello everyone and welcome to 40 Questions. My name is Stephen Walker and today I am interviewing Ganchi Meg Dawa. Mm. Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And so your full name is Ganchi Meg Dawa. Yes. And so your nickname? My nip nickname is Ghana. Ghana. Yeah. So I will call you Ghana. Yes. It's easier for me. Yes, much more uh, Okay. Uh, so first, where are you from, Ghana? Uh, I'm from Mongolia. From Mongolia. Mm. And for people that don't know where Mongolia is, where is Mongolia? So Mongolia is located uh, in between the Russia and China. And you, you can say Mongolia is in uh, East Asia also. It's, okay, so it's in Asia. In Asia. And it's south. And south part is China, so it's north part is Russia. Okay, so it's south of Russia and, and north, north of China. Of China yes. Okay, and the nationality, what, what nationality are people from Mongolia? Um, majority of Mongolian people is uh, uh, almost more than 95% is Mongolian people. Mongolian. Mongolian people. Okay, so yes. you have Mongolian people and Mongolian yeah. culture and food. Yes. And the population of Mongolia? Um, population of Mongolia recently became a little bit over than 3 million. A little bit over 3 million people? Yes, in total. Okay, yes. and it's a big country. Big country. But kind small of a small population. population. <laughs> and the capital city of Mongolia is? Uh, capital city of Mongolia is called Ulaanbaatar. 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 Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so what is the population of Ulaanbaatar? Uh, population of Ulaanbaatar is uh, also a little bit over than one million. Okay. So it's yes. about one third of, of the entire population. population. And in unit two we talk about shapes, sizes, and appearances. Ghana, what color is the flag of Mongolia? Uh, Mongolian flag color is blue, red, and golden color. Okay, so it's yes. three different colors. Three different colors. And question seven, the flag. What does the flag look like? So Mongolian flag look like uh, three equal stripes, uh, uh, vertical stripes. Three, three vertical stripes. Vertical stripes. And color is uh, the red, blue, Red. Okay, so on and the, the on, on the left and the right are red, and in the center the center part is is blue. blue. Okay. Blue, yes, and on the left side of the uh, red stripe. Mm -hmm, stri the left side of the flag. There, there's a, a symbol called the soyump. 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 Yes. Okay. So it's like a geometrical shape of sun, moon, and fire, and symbol of peace, peace, and uh, basically uh, represents a Mongolian life and peaceful life. Okay, and, yes. that's a nice meaning. And you have a yin yang yes. also, yes. similar Included to Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the colors mean? Do they mean anything special? Red uh, and blue or gold? Uh, Mongolia is very sunny country, not rainy throughout the year. So the blue color is the blue sky. Okay. Represents the blue sky. It's the mostly where we really have blue sky, very beautiful sky. And also red color represents like uh, flourishing and the Power, look, power looking yeah. forward Red is a powerful to, color. Yeah, yes, looking forward to the future. Mm -hmm. and, and how about the gold? Uh, gold color is uh, the respect of the Mongolian na nation. and. Okay, all right, very yeah. good. Mm. Uh, questions eight and nine are about appearances. Mm, yeah. I'm from yeah. the United States. It's a difficult question <laughs> because people, they're in <laughs> there are all kinds of different appearances. Uh, but how about Mongolia? What does the majority of men and women look like if we go and travel to Mongolia? So Mongolia is an uh, uh, East Asian country, so uh, the, major, the Mongolian people are the Asian people and uh, Asian appearance. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, average height. Okay. Um, and dark hair 
and brown eye or mm -hmm. black, sometimes black eyes. Yeah. Mm, some mix mixture of dark color eyes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a bit tan, tanner or yeah, light little brownish little bit skin. Tanned skin. Yeah. Yes. You okay. Should, mm. And the tenth question is minorities. Mm. Are there any minorities that live in Mongolia? Um, there are like many tribes used to live in Mongolian countries. So, mm. like there are like uh, people live uh, live with the uh, race uh, reindeers. Okay. And so, what so what? Ethnic group ethnic would they groups. be called? Uh, in Mongolia, they called uh, Chatan. 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 Yes. Okay. And they live. They live very northern parts of Mongolia. Okay. And they are like very far distant area. Okay. So they can be minority, but they are still uh, uh, Mongolian still Mongolian. Mongolian. Yeah. People. Sure. Okay, and in Unit 3, we talk about food, tastes, and ingredients. And what is a traditional food that is eaten in Mongolia? Uh, one of my favorite uh, food is uh, hoshor. Hoshor? Yes. Okay. Uh, Question 12 is the ingredients. What are the ingredients of, of the hoshor? hoshor? Uh, it's, it's similar with uh, pastry. A pastry. pastry, okay. Pastry. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, meat pastry. It's a meat pastry. Yeah. And it's uh, meat inside. What, what kind of meat? Is it different types? Usually, usually it can be made by uh, beef. Okay. Beef. Some it can be mixed with mutton and ma mainly it's beef. Okay. Beef meat and wrapped in a uh, flour and fried. Okay, uh, I. I don't know, maybe I've tried something similar, but how would you describe the taste? So, um, Mongolian people like uh, um, fresh meat. Mm -hmm. So they, we put a lot of fresh meat, so it, it has a very rich, um, like meat gravy taste. Okay. And uh, maybe a little bit oily, but it tastes um, it's really it's, it's meaty and meaty and also it's fried so it's crispy. Okay. So it is really good. All right. <laughs> sounds it, so, it does sounds yeah. actually pretty yummy. Um, uh, now your mother would make this when yeah. you were a young yes, young girl yes. in Mongolia. Yeah, sure. So how do you remember? How did how did this ho hoshor? Mm -hmm. How did it smell? It smells like. Uh, it's not like fried chicken, but it's like fried, crispy. It smells like meaty. a frying pastry. Frying pastry meat. Uh, and, yeah. and you can smell the meat in the air yes. also? Yeah, smell of like, like soup or, yeah, smell of meat in the air. And so you take it out of the, the oil and then you let it cool? Yes. Okay, and then so can you describe the texture when you, when you bite into it when you eat it? So, so we cut the meat into small cubes mm -hmm. and then wrap it with uh, flour so it, it's uh, soft. Okay. Soft, soft. Mm -hmm. It's not chewy. It's not it's chewy. Not chewy, yeah. yes. And, and also flour is uh, crispy. So the bread, mm -hmm. the bread. breading or the pastry is crispy and crispy. the meat is chewy. chewy. Or not, I'm no, sorry, not, not chewy. It's soft. Yeah. It's soft. So Soft. I could say soft. I would All right. Say, well, yeah. I'm going to try that one of these days, mm. unless you want to cook it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is a favorite one of favorite food. Okay, sounds yeah. good. And in unit four, we talk about weather, seasons, and landscapes. And question sixteen: uh, What is the landscape like in Mongolia? If we maybe start from the west and go east, east. kind of over encompassing it. So Mongolia's territory is very wide and it's landlocked, mm -hmm. and doesn't have sea and um, from starting from the west in the northern areas, uh, mountain ranges. Okay. 
of Mongolia. So up near the Russian border, it's it's yeah. mountainous. Mountainous mountain range, and the middle part is uh, great white step steps, and. So that is very. Is it hilly or mostly flat? He white is hilly, but I would say it's more little flat. And in the southern part is uh, there is a Gobi Desert. The Gobi Desert. Okay, yes. so northern China and southern Mongolia. Yeah, it's a Gobi Desert. Okay. Gobi Desert is not not just sand. It is, has its own ecosystem and uh -huh. nature and uh, its own animals. What and kind of animals live there? So there are the distinct animal is the Mongolian camel. The camels, okay. Yeah. It has uh, two humps. Two humps. Yeah. I believe it's uh, only in Mongolia. Okay. Native in Mongolia. Have you, have you ridden on the camels? <laughs> I've only seen. <laughs> oh, you've only seen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, come on, you have to ride one. <laughs> yes, but people are, yeah, in Gopi Desert, nomadic people are living there and they are raising camels mm -hmm. and ri riding them as their everyday life. Yeah. Yes. So and also, do they, do they use them as a food source? Yeah, do they food source and camel hump is, uh, hump is like 100% uh, fat. fat, yeah. Yes. So that's that's that keeps the people alive in the winter mm -hmm. time, I yes. imagine. Yes. Okay, so then we were we have the the forests and the mountains, Area. and then the Gobi and the steppes. Yes. And uh, the Ulan Bator. Yeah, Ulan Bator. Is where is that in Mongolia? What part? Ulan Bator is a little bit north central part. North central. North central. And so central. you are from. Where are you from? I'm from Ulaanbaatar city. Oh, you are? Okay, yes. you were born and raised there. Yes, born and raised. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, and question 17 is seasons. How many seasons does Mongolia have? So Mongolia have four seasons. It does have four. Four seasons. Okay. Mm. And what is, what is your favorite season growing up in Mongolia? Favorite season, I I would say spring, 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 springtime. Spring, yes. So, can you describe what uh, spring is like in Mongolia? So, Mongolia has very long winter, mm -hmm. and like almost nine months of the year is wow. cool and c or cold. So, spring is the beginning of the summer and warm season. So, so my I like spring season. And this is the more mildest time, I would say. It's like summer is 25. Uh, it, the daytime is 25, mm -hmm. and nighttime is like 15. Okay. So the next question, 19, is about natural disasters. Mm -hmm. What natural disasters does Mongolia experience? So, Mongolia is very dry country. Mm -hmm. So. During summertime, if sometimes it, the rain stops raining. So okay, so it's a drought. A drought mm -hmm. in summertime, so it's very devastating, especially the for livestock. Right. There's no water, and we lose lost many animals. Right. And during winter time, it's like a lot of snowfall and blizzards. Uh huh. So, so continuously cold day and night so it's also um, a nat natural disaster yeah blizzards mm. droughts mm. Uh, springtime a lot of a lot of rain springtime I would say more like um, wind and dust okay so wind and dust, dust. storms yes in springtime okay and uh, question 20 an important holiday what is an important holiday for people in Mongolia? Um, the most one of the main holiday is a Mongolian traditional sports festival. Sports festival, okay. Yes. And the name of it in Mongolian is? Uh, it's called Natam. Natam. Natam festival. Okay. It, it is in middle of July. Okay. 10, 11, 12, and 13th. The 
peak is warmest point Period. of the year. Mm -hmm. and so it's three day festival? Three day festival. And it's it's very traditional from the 13th century. Uh -huh. And we have three main activities, sports activity. One is wrestling. Okay. Second is... And the Mongolian wrestling, what's the name of that in Mongolian? Wrestling is Buch uh, Berlta. <laughs> okay. So Buch Berlta? Buch means uh, res the noun of the wrestling. Uh -huh. And Berlta means the verb. So okay. Buch Berlta or Buchin Berlta. Okay. We say so yes. we have we have the wrestling and, and the horse racing horse racing and archery and archery yes. yeah all horses are very very important part of mongolia yes. yeah horse culture okay and then archery so do people like ride on the horses and do archery or is it separate separate it's separate, separate yes. okay separate and that happened this this holiday happens all throughout Mongolia. Yeah, all around the country. All around and the country. My main event is in the capital city. So people from all around the country come to capital city mm -hmm. and they bring their best wrestler and best horse. Okay. And best archers. <laughs> so it's time for competition. Yes. <laughs> all right. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Sounds interesting. We're going to get into Unit 5 now, which is Ports, Transportation, and Accommodation. And question 21, when we fly into Mongolia, what is the main international airport? Uh, main international airport, we have one mm -hmm. in, in capital city. It's called uh, Chinggis International Airport. Chinggis? Chinggis, yeah. Okay, and so the English pronunciation I've always heard and this is a big name Genghis Khan yes and so the Mongolian pronunciation is Genghis Khan Genghis Khan yes okay <laughs> first time I've heard that uh, <laughs> yes it's also taken me many many years to <laughs> get, it, get this very popular man's name it's, correct it's written in G right the it's J. Like J. Well, in English it would be G H E N. Yes. So I always heard it was or yeah. Genghis, Genghis Khan. But we say Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan. Yes. So Genghis International yeah, Airport. airport. Yes. Okay. And so we arrive in Genghis International yeah. Airport. And question 22 What are some modes of transportation that we can take in Mongolia, traveling throughout Mongolia? I would say in Mongolia it's a bus. Okay. It's bus and bus is the main mode of transportation and in the, in so the city. So throughout the main city the yeah, bus. bus. Buses are everywhere. Everywhere. And then okay let's get out of the main city and we're going to explore Mongolia. What, how, how can we uh, travel throughout the country? What are, some, what are some unique ways of traveling? Uh, it's a car. Cars. Car. You have to go by car. And if you go even further, you have to go by horse. By horse? Yes. So, car and then horse and then horse. down south, camel? <laughs> can we take camels? Uh, in the desert, you can go by car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess a land cruiser that would yes. go over the desert, all right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. But I want to travel by camel. Camel? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> It's, it's very it's comfortable. It's maybe. possible, anyway. Yes. Okay, and uh, question 23. We are in Mongolia. What, what would you recommend? What is a nice hotel that we can stay at when we're in Mongolia? Um, the main hotel is uh, Ulaanbaatar Hotel. That's the name, Ulaanbaatar Hotel. Ulaanbaatar Hotel. Also, we have Chinggis Hotel. Chinggis Hotel. You can find anything with Chinggis. <laughs> yeah, that's yes, true. Yes, it's, it's, it's also a big hotel. Okay. One of the main hotel. And, and do you know what types of amenities uh, are available uh, at Chinggis Hotel? You you can find the main amenities like towels of the face and body towels, mm -hmm. and slippers. Do they have like the rooms? 
uh, little mini bar or yeah, yes, refrigerator. Mini bar, every everything they have. Nice, here. nice restaurant. Big restaurant and internet. It's, it's a big hotel. Swimming so pool. Um, I'm not sure about swimming pool, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. Okay, well we can I we can research and see if it. It has I'm sure, yeah. swimming pool. Yes. It's but it's one of the top two. Yes. Ulaanbaatar the and then Genghis. Genghis. Okay. okay. Yeah. And question 25, uh, currency. And what what is the currency that is used in Mongolia? What's the name of the currency? So Mongolian currency is called Tugruk. 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 Okay. Yes. Tugruk. Tugruk. And do you know what the exchange rate of Tugruk is to the American dollar now? So recently, uh, one USD dollar is equals to 2,400 around. About 2,400. And yeah. what w what is on this currency? Are there any famous people or famous places? Yeah, if we were to look at at the money. In the money, yes, uh, there's a. Uh, on the big notes, there's Genghis Khan, mm -hmm. and then there's the other people's uh, picture, like Sukhbatar is a general, also another Mongolian general. Okay. Usually, uh, pictures of people. People. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Similar <laughs> yes. to American currency, then. Yes. The presidents, or yeah, yeah, basically the famous presidents. And moving into Unit Six. Greetings, gestures, and customs. Mm. And when we are in Mongolia, what is a greeting that we can use? Um, the when I meet you and I yes. say, uh, you can say for hi or hello. You can say seno, S seno, seno, or sembeno, sembeno, sembeno. Yes, uh, it will work pretty much in all. Situation, I would say. Sengbeno. Sengbeno. Okay. Or seno. Okay. Seno is more much, most easier. <laughs> seno. Seno, yes. Okay, that, that that's yeah. an easy one to remember. Mm -hmm. And question twenty-seven is gestures, uh, hand gestures, body gestures. So if if I meet someone, mm -hmm. uh, what is a gesture that I can use when when greeting? Yeah. So in Mongolia, people uh, greet. Uh, by handshake, okay. both men and women. So I can say, yeah. Seno. Seno. Okay. Yes, handshake is the main gesture. Are there any other gestures that uh, that positive or, you know, good gestures that I should know about? Um, handshake is the most, you know, universal. A good, good strong good. handshake? Yes. Okay, and then moving into the and next question, tw 28, yeah. what gestures are impolite? that we should not do in in Mongolia? Impolite. Uh, uh, we don't point to someone with finger. Okay, one finger yeah, directly. Some point directly pointing or you talk to some people and then pointing at someone else. Okay. It can be like, it, it can be expressed like confrontation or something. Okay. And also, you don't call person by finger like like this. Okay, <laughs> but yes. so this way is okay. Mm. If I want, if I want this person to come over here. Uh huh. No, I. No gesture. This is also strange. That's it's strange. Don't do this. Yes, just it's the best way is just call their name. Call their name. Okay. Yes. Okay, and how about yeah. eye contact? Ah, uh, we have eye contact pretty is good, strong eye contact. Strong eye contact, yes. saying hello, yes. talking to each other. It's con not like uh, other, like Korea or Japan, they're supposed to avoid like, eye contact, that's but right, Mongolia yeah. is uh, re reversed. It's reversed, yes. okay, that, that's good to know. Yes. For question 29 is customs. What are some important customs that are practiced in Mongolia. It's natural when you like take your shoe off. Okay, coming into, yeah, the, into house, the house, you take your shoes off. Take your shoes off, and we doesn't bow. 
You, no, no bowing. No okay. bowing. It's not in Mongolia. That's more Eastern Asian. Yeah, custom. Yeah, Eastern Asian, and custom. But we are more respectful for older people, mm -hmm. elderly people. Is so if I'm on a bus yes. and there's an older woman yeah. or man, then yeah, we uh, give up the seat. You should stand and let them sit. Elderly people. Okay. And just as for a respect, not for uh, like obligation or something. Sure. Something, yes. Like in everyday life is quite like easy, easy going. Easy going. We don't have like very formal, uh, formal customs. Okay, well that's good to know. Yes, yeah, easy. You, 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 can, you can be very free. Okay. Yes, yeah, quite free and just, uh, just be very like, polite or kind yeah. so that that just be nice be, yeah just be, be nice, nice and you'll yeah. be you'll be okay yeah it, it will be enough okay yes. and the 30th question is about religion so what religions are practiced in mongolia in mongolia main majority part of the buddhism um, next uh, i would say big part is shamanism okay shamanism yes it's, now it's actually getting bigger before Buddhism, the majority of Mongolians yes. were shamanists. They're shamanists, Shams. like the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar. that's that's yeah, that's right. Yes. And I just interviewed Thunderstorm for the United States, and he also said that yes. many of the Native Americans now in the U.S. are going back, going back to their to roots. Their roots yeah. Yes. And and then Buddhism, shamanism. Any and other religions? Uh, Christian is Christianity is also taking some part yeah. in Mongolia. So it has a certain percentage. Certain percentage, and then the, the minor part is like uh, Muslim or mm -hmm. then the other uh, religions. Okay. Is, this is so there are there are part. you can find some, but the majority yeah. are Buddhist and shamanist and, and Christian. And Christian. Okay. And the other. Moving into Unit 7, which is Landmarks, Activities, and Things to Do. Question 31, where is a good place to go sightseeing in Mongolia? Mm, there are uh, many good places you can go yeah. and explore. And if you go to the around countryside, okay. in the northern, northern area, there's a big lake called Hopsu Lake. And, and that's a big freshwater big lake. Freshwater lake, and you can go and explore. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, for f four season a year. It's very cold. Okay. Yeah. Cold northern, northern northern part area. And if you go near the city, there's a national park, Tirulj National Park. It's also a very beautiful place for uh, near the city national park, and also. If you go south mm -hmm. uh, near Gobi Desert, uh, there's a called place called uh, Yoling Am. Yoling Am. Yoling Am. It's a very beautiful um, place, and there you can see uh, wild animals okay. uh, living uh, as they are in the nature. Uh, question 32 is about landmarks. What are some famous landmarks that we can see in Mongolia? Uh, in Mongolia, in Ulaanbaatar city, mm -hmm. you can see a uh, statue of Genghis Khan okay. in Genghis Square. In Genghis Square. Yeah. And so Genghis Khan is, he's from Mongolia. He yes. was born there. Yes. Do you know what part of Mongolia? Uh, people, uh, people say uh, Genghis Khan was born uh, in uh, Mongolia is division is called Emek, so one of the uh, name of the Emek is Hinti Emek. Hinti Emek. Yes, that area. Okay. Yes. Any other landmarks? So, um, if you want to see uh, the whole city from the high high point, uh -huh. you can go to the war war memorial uh, spot. is called Zesen. And you can go up to the Zesen um, Memorial Place. 
and it's and on a mountain on, on the top of the mountain and there's a good uh, resting complex area okay and see some view of the city and it's a good view of a nice the view of the, of the capital city yes okay and any more in, uh, in and also in the city there are um, the temples called the uh, Janrasik temple Janrasik temple it has a big uh, standing uh, gold Buddhist the Buddha Buddha inside the big temple okay all right and activities is question 23 what are some activities that people enjoy doing in Mongolia so I would say uh, the basic activities like uh, sports mm -hmm. so uh, wrestling <laughs> yes wrestling can include like you can play sports or play bowling and go bowling yeah go bowling and see you can singing and you can go dancing and but I would say let's uh, get out of the city I want I want Mongolian a, a Mongolian experience a Mongolian ex maybe more of the nomadic people what kind of activities do they do yes uh, one of the favorite activities go going Camping, going mm -hmm. for a trip. You can live in Mongolian gear. Gear, okay, yes. which is the big round tent. Round, uh, yes. Also yurt. Yurt. Mm -hmm. And this is a uh, people are in, even now is normally living in the gear in the countryside. Okay. You can go and rest there in summertime, and sounds interesting to yes. me. Yes, and you can help on the the uh, livestock and help them herding herding, herding the animals, animals and feeding and the animals and, and milking milking them and you can herd the animals with ho horse okay yeah all right sounds good mm. how about falcons I've seen pictures of like Mongolian men or or even women on fal uh, horses and they have they, they go hunting with the falcons yes they they are Kazakh people. Oh, those like are the Kazakhs. Kazakh okay, people. in the northern northern they part. They live in northern part of Mongolia. I see. Y yes, and they are quite famous, and they also have uh, livestock, and um, they hunt with with the uh, falcons. Mm -hmm. They hunt like big and sometimes even wolves yeah. and foxes. Mm -hmm fox and wolves and yeah. I guess probably rabbits and yeah yeah yes. that's interesting mm. okay and what what activity did you enjoy doing when you were growing up in Mongolia what was one of your favorite activities yeah as a young girl every summer uh, many Mongolian children go to countryside go to the countryside their grandparents live in the countryside okay and uh, we uh, go to their home and we spend summer like playing in the countryside and helping their uh, <laughs> help grandma and grandpa with <laughs> with uh, daily, daily daily chores chores and uh, they are they are not only they have a, a horse and cows goat mm -hmm. and some some family so grow crops and they have sometimes bee also raise bees Mongolian so honey that sounds I'd like to try that I'm sure it's probably pretty good yeah yeah Mongolia has many like very um, mountain flower is mm -hmm. very the tough they withstand the cold with weather yeah in winter so that makes summer. the honey all the much more healthy yeah, and yeah, powerful healthy, yes okay and the last question of unit seven is about people watching mm. so I'm in Mongolia uh, where would be a good place to go just you know sit maybe have a coffee and watch watch people watch the daily life of Mongolians pass us by so as you know in the countryside you wouldn't find many people <laughs> no so let's let's <laughs> stick let's stick to uh, yeah. so Ulaanbaatar most densely populated area is the Ulaanbaatar city mm -hmm. and central part of the Ulaanbaatar city is 
Chinggis Square. Okay. And you can find some nice cafe or terrace, mm -hmm. terrace area and sit there and see people in uh, Chinggis, near around the Chinggis Square. There are many uh, nice restaurants and cafes. Right. You can enjoy. Okay, there. sounds good. Uh, unit 8, this is the last unit of the journal and it's about music, pop culture, and famous people. Okay, and question 36 is music. What kinds of music are popular throughout Mongolia? So, uh, of course there's uh, the modern pop culture sure. in Mongolia. Yeah. The, all the pop music. And so you have Mongolian pop stars? Yes, pop stars and all the music genres the sure, okay. people hear. Mm -hmm. And also there's a traditional music. Mm. And can you describe that to us? What 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 is the traditional music like? So apart from just folk song, uh -huh. so that's uh, a basic song. There's a very traditional uh, song is called uh, long song. Long song. Yes, it's very distinct and unique, and only certain people can sing because you sing with one breath and you sing like very long, long... <laughs> is, is it uh, the mo like the throat singing? That's another one. That's a different one. That's a different one. Okay. So we have uh, two main, I would say. Okay. Uh, throat singing is also very unique. Yeah. So you you make some special sound can you can you do the throat no. singing <laughs> no i can't <laughs> can you do the long song ah uh, that's yes you can a very high level <laughs> <laughs> but you've tried a professional level well song. but you have yeah. to practice to get to the <laughs> practice makes perfect <laughs> if you hear the song it, it's really really uh, in professional okay level. Song. All right, that yeah. sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, are there any instruments, any Mongolian instruments that they use with traditional yeah. music? Yes, the together with long song we have a merenghor. 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 And what is that? What what kind of instrument? So this is uh, like a fiddle. Okay. Fiddle, uh, but it's Mongolian design. And mm -hmm the top of its head is shaped like a horse head. Okay. So, uh, it's in English it's fiddle with the horse head. Okay. So in Mongolia we say Marenghor. Marenghor. Yes. So it's, uh, I would say it's uh, main Mongolian instrument. Okay. And yep. it's, it has uh, also different uh, sound. It's very earthy and sound and um, how many strings two only two strings only two strings okay and you can make people make a sound of horse is you can you can, you can hear it it's, it is a sound of horse right so it has a, its own legend and history and it's very interesting that is interesting yes. yeah I'll, I'll take a look at that for sure Mm. And okay, famous people are next. Question 37. I think I know one of them <laughs> that you'll be telling me about. Yes. So, can you give us two, maybe three famous people from Mongolia? So, first one you know mm. is Chinggis Jing Hang. Yes. So, he was uh, a military uh, general and emperor in 13th century and uh, if I but uh, if I say modern uh, Mongolian famous people, mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, sumo wrestler. Okay, um, a sumo sumo as in Japan. In Japan, yes. Uh, his name is Tauk Torch. Uh, he ranked the highest rank wow. in, in sumo wrestling. In Currently, Japan. now in Japan, he wrestles. Uh, Right, I, I'm not sure about right now, but, but he recently, recently he achieved the highest rank in okay. sumo wrestling. So he's very famous in Japan. All right, and question 38 
is another maybe famous person for Mongolia, but mm -hmm. it's uh, the president or leader. Who mm -hmm. is who is Mongolia's president or leader of of the country? Uh, so yeah, so we this year we had a presidential election. Okay. And now we have a new president. Uh huh. Uh, his name is Hartmagin uh, Batolak. Okay. And he he was also a sportsman. He w okay. Yes. He was an athlete. athlete. Was he a wrestler? Yes. And yeah. and a wrestler that became beloved so by the people and yes. now a politician. Become political figure. And so, yes. how long does uh, a term last in Mongolia? It's four years. Four years. Four years. And then, can he be reelected? Reelected one time. One time. And then next the president got elected. So, so four years, maybe eight years, yes. and then finished. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And the next question, question thirty-nine, is about subcultures. What would be a subculture that we can find in Mongolia? Mm, probably. Uh, I said the uh, shamanism is now popular, mm -hmm. becoming more popular in Mongolia, and in shamanism, uh, anyone can be the shaman. Okay. So I would say many also young people, young persons. So that's starting to rise up yeah, as, rise as a up. subculture. Yes, and they becoming uh, shaman, uh -huh. and then doing the the specific customs and their family supporting them. Okay, well that's interesting, I shamanism. Say, yes, I would say that would be also interesting. Right, okay. Yeah. Ghana, mm. this is the last question. Okay. You ready? <laughs> question number 40, and it's about the flower. You've already talked a little bit about different flowers, the mountain flowers, and mm -hmm. but does Mongolia have a national flower? Yes. It does. Yes, we have. Uh, Mongolian national flower is uh, in Mongolia. It's called birtstick. Mm -hmm. Birtstick. Uh, its uh, Latin name is scabiosa. Okay. Uh, it's uh, purple colored and uh, it's a mountain flower, and it has a, a medical property. Okay. Yeah, like kind of herb and. It's uh, spread throughout the Mongol most of Mongolian area, so people really like this flower and take it as a symbol of health. Okay, mm. and how do you say thank you in Mongolian? Bayrla, 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 bayrla. I know it's hard. Ghana, thank you very much. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed I enjoyed the much. interview. I learned a lot about mm -hmm. Mongolia. Uh, and I hope everyone that watched this also have a better understanding of where Mongolia is and uh, a little bit more about what it's like to live and travel through Mongolia. So until next time, my name is Stephen Walker, and this is Tell Me About It, 40 Questions. Bye-bye.